Hello, everybody. Welcome to Critic Box. It's been a minute, but we're back and we've brought some people with us and we are going to be talking about the intricacies of making an independent film. And guess who I found? Sarah's here. Hello. Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, it's been a minute. I broke my arm and that's okay. But we're back. We're here. We're being a person again. And I brought some of my favorite filmmaking friends here, uh, Robert Vaughn and Jennifer Gibson. And oh. why did you bring them, Sarah? I brought them because they made an incredible movie. Uh, making movies is hard for anybody that's ever made a movie. Uh, but making a movie in the independent film structure is so hard. And this is getting its theatrical release coming up this week. Uh, so I wanted to bring director Rob and producer Jen in to tell us just how hard it is to make a movie, but just how magical this movie is and uh, why we should all go see it. Thank you, Sarah. That's kind. But honestly, we, Rob and I, didn't just make the movie. You were very much involved, as was every single person who was on our cast and crew. Because this was not one of those movies that you could sit by and do nothing. I mean, one of your lovely PAs, Spencer, uh, replied recently. He said, at one point, I forgot what my job was. So I just started asking people what they needed. And that was exactly what our show was. It was just everybody pitching in wherever they could and whenever they could, because I think they just believed in the story and the reason it was it needed to be told. So uh, so thanks for giving the credit to us. But all credit has to go to everybody involved. I second that. I uh, it, it's one of those things where it, it's making any low budget film is, you know, in a, in a short schedule of like 12 days, which we made this. It's it's incredibly hard, but. This was almost hard for different reasons because we all believed in it and because the stakes were high. And that's why we just, we wanted to, everyone wanted to bring their A plus game and just, they killed themselves to make it. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't that sort of uh, begrudging, like, I got to do this job, you know, here's a TV movie or whatever, and I, I'm going to do it. And it's, and they're asking so much for me for so little um it, it was so it was it was for the right reasons challenging and, and difficult nice nice what was I, I i we're just gonna jump right into this because we are talking about the filmmaking process and i think everyone here understands how intense that is like it's nice being on the other end and just watching the film and really really loving what you're seeing on the screen but actually this one this this show definitely is for the filmmakers and like diving deep into what it's like to be on set be in the back end and making sure that all the pieces come together to 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 create like works of art so i guess my question is what was it to you guys like what was the mem most memorable part other than the crew all pitching in to make sure that what you are all creating is wonderful what was the other most memorable part or the best part of the process for you I mean, to me, it was the first time that I'd ever been able to do what I wanted or thought was needed to be done on a set, Rob and I, of course. Um, it was the first time I didn't have a boss to answer to, like a network or something that would say, don't do that, don't do that, it's too much, like having pronouns on call sheets. That was something that because we were a film that deals with allyship of the 2SLGBTQIA plus community and straight people, like Rob and I are married, we're straight folks, and we wanted to make a movie about allyship that, you know, it doesn't have to be just, oh, only gay people in this movie and it's a gay movie or only straight people in this movie, it's a straight movie. It's like, no, it's just a people movie. So, right. but we knew it's still sensitive, the subject. So we wanted to have as many people from the 2SLGBTQIA plus community as possible involved with it. So, um, yeah, so having th things like having call sheets on set, um, having resources available for people if their mental health was triggered at all, because we deal with some really heavy stuff in this movie. And again, with having a, cr a crew made most and cast made mostly of community, some of this stuff was hard for them to witness. So, I mean, there were so many great people on set that would say, oh, it'd be nice if we had like a resource for mental health and be like, well, we can. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, why not? Because none of us were used to not having a boss that would say, you can't do that, that's dumb, whatever. So it was just really cool to be able to implement all of the things that I think I learned what not to do for so many years, making movies for other people. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting because uh, 
I coined the, well, I, I don't know if, I'm sure I didn't invent the phrase, but that no one can disrespect you like a committee. And in this movie, um, we had, uh, we had the same, we, we, we have an incredible partner in it, Sahar Whalen, who made it all possible with, with this, in the uh, initial, with the investment and then the tax credit. So, I, I mean, I, I'll be forever grateful. I mean, it's, it's like- Yeah, it, Sahar is the but, whole reason this movie exists, for yeah. sure. And, and yeah, and we, and just having every, I mean, I know I said it before, but I feel like my job as a director is to try to empower people because, you know, it's like Sarah, you know, we'll go to the volume wall and, and I'll say, you know, I'm, I want something like this. You're, Sarah's in my head and, and she, and if I just empower her, you tell me what's great. She'll bring something back that far exceeds my expectations. But I, I would say the, the one thing I, loved about this film and I, maybe it's true for every film but this one in particular because there was a lot of meat on the bones in the script uh by ali jennings who is from the community um she's brilliant uh, but the thing that i love the most is that between action and cut when an actor does that sort of blind stitch moment uh it, it, it may be between the lines right it's that subtle thing that they're doing that where they've just ingested and made this organic to them it is that's magic for me when i'm like holy shit um and, and it's zemeckis said it uh i think really well that that that's the greatest special effect there is you know um and and, and, and that's the magic trick right that that acts that brilliant actors can do and jen's a brilliant actress as well but uh, that the stuff that you did in it, I'm just like, holy shit. But, um, but that's the most rewarding. what you said rewarding. makes a lot of sense is that if you empower everyone in every department the way that great actors can empower good, I'm sorry, great directors can empower good actors, if you give that to every department, it just makes your film so much better. And why wouldn't you? That is that what they've studied, like the sound department. I don't know nearly enough about sound. I'll admit it. I'm a bad filmmaker. But I trust that the people I hire do, you know, and if there's a problem, I trust that they'll know how to fix it. And I, you know, you get hired for a reason because you have that great skill set. So hire the people that are the best you can get and then just trust them. Yeah. And if Don't you empower, if you empower them, the whole becomes greater than the, the, the some of the parts. Right. I mean, uh, hands. Absolutely. No. And honestly, that's the truth. I mean, when you break, bring up the point about the actors doing what they do and just like giving that extra long take just to see at the end after all the dialogues finished what the expressions were like what the emotions are coming out and you may have that little bit at the end of the scene where you could put it in post and it just becomes this special magical moment and then you're like yeah that's the look I need to help me encapsulate the story that I'm telling and it's 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 such incredible subject matter by the way people we are talking about the film called this time <laughs> starring Anne Wynne O'Driscoll um this is the wonderful movie that Robert and Jennifer are bringing to us right now so look it up and we'll obviously tell you where you'll be able to watch it but um in re in regards to the casting process because I really love it when my directors when I am on set as an actor just give me the space to tell let me tell my character story you know it, it just it gives me the breath to be like okay you finish the dialogue but emote and this is the type of emotions i feel that my character should have in this moment how did you guys approach the casting process like rob you have to tell the story as soon as you started uh talking all i could think about was rob putting poor onwin through actual hell in her zoom callback usually like Actual, like crawling through the mud in war hell. Uh, anyway, you tell the story because I was just well, a spectator. I was like, <sighs> I mean, uh, I'll give props to Larissa Mayer, the casting director, who yes. said on what on one is. You've yeah. got you've got to, you know, see on one. And I think originally on one, I can't remember if she couldn't audition she or whatever. Make it to the original callback. Um, but so she zoomed in afterwards and we also made it a lot harder on Larissa because we asked for only two SLGBTQIA plus actors to play two SLGBTQIA roles. Well, so, nice. um, yeah, we just thought again with us being straight filmmakers that representation matters. 
So uh, we knew it would hinder our ability to find our lead. We were scared about it, but we thought especially the lead, it was so important to have her be from the community. So yeah. well, uh, I yeah. interrupted you, Rob. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say the, uh, the callback. I, I always look at like callbacks as free rehearsal time, which may be terrible for an actor, but in a low budget movie, you don't have... You can't afford uh, actress rehearsal time. You, and, you know, it's just, it, it's one of those things when you're doing a thing on a wing and a prayer. But, uh, but you know, the, one of the things I like to do is sort of give notes to actors and layer it and layer it and layer it. And, you know, okay, let's, we got that. Now let's, let's add this, let's add that. And then at the very end, I like to say, okay, now just forget it all. Do whatever you want. Because what I find is that they've, it takes the pressure off and they haven't forgotten the layers that they've put in, in the previous takes. But then that, that, that's when you'll just sort of, I think, get the magic. Um, so many I times. I stole something from Darren Aronofsky very much like that. He said to Natalie Portman in Black Swan, whenever he got what he wanted, he'd say, okay, Natalie, this one's for you. Yeah. So it, I stole uh, it. I love that. Thank yeah, you, Darren and, Aronofsky. And I, I, I'll and I'll do that, you know. And you're right. Thank you, Darren Aronofsky. But, uh, but yeah, we we did put Onwin through hell. Um, I mean, I had she had a reader that was her friend. Is it her brother or something? Okay, the friend, the friend went through hell too. Boy, yeah. I'm like, okay, can you guys get a chair? Put it in between <laughs> you. Now I want you to struggle and fight over this chair while we're doing this. You know, just replicating sort of some of the the physicality. Uh, of the at the conversion therapy center when she is dropped off um Don't and give doesn't it all away. Stay. i won't i won't but uh um, I, I love that just the actor action of like releasing an actor to be invested in the action so that the lines come out more organically that you're not thinking about what's tied to the emotion of the thing but invested in the action of the thing that's brilliant facts absolute facts um i th- i can't remember who i was watching but uh, she is an incredible actress and she's like the best thing I love to do I think it was Anne Hathaway she's like I just love wa- washing the dishes you know mm-hmm. washing the dishes while she's running through lines because if you have some type of physicality in there like the lines just naturally come out of you uh, and I think directors um honestly just like putting actors through hell I, I just, it's like it's never really gonna be like that on set but you know just for my own entertainment how far can i push you but it's it's not yeah i mean i wish it was sadism for me but uh i feel that way more towards committees of producers uh on other projects not this one but uh for me it's like no we do all this sort of sense memory work and groundwork in in a callback and then they that's their baseline when they come to set the play right so that's why it's important to me, and I, I don't. I wouldn't. I don't want to talk about casting without talking about uh, our dear friend Charlie Martin Smith, uh, who plays Red in the movie. Um, and, and he, he, he so he I've not known have him. to audition. No, no, I've known him for <laughs> no, twenty five years. <laughs> Yeah. People keep like, asking us, how did you get him? And I'm like, Rob, it's Rob's best friend for many years. So. He's like, I'm just going to drive this RV. You're going to roll with the camera. So I'm going to do my thing. Okay. You know, <laughs> we put him through hell too. Gosh. Yeah. But he, and he, but he, he told me he loved it because he'd yeah. been directing for 10 years or maybe more with the uh, Dolphin Tail. Dolphin Tail 2. He kind of got into the family niche after directing Air Bud and he did Dog's Way Home. So this was like his first acting in, in over a decade and he loved it. He loved it. And he would get in a scene with on one and it was just, he would, for, he said, I would forget where I am. And that is the best. Then, you know, you're in it and, and that's the best. And, and even in the scene, we had our lovely and dear friend, Erica Durant in a cameo. Uh, same thing, right? Like where, it's just we had to make her look less beautiful. I kept saying to the poor makeup artists, I mean, like, could you just make her look a little more like me, a little bit tired here, just a little more, guys. And yeah. I'll admit, in real life, it looked a little bit much. But on the screen, because Erica's so lovely and luminous, it actually made her look like a person who's had a normal life and hard times, whereas Erica magnificent look but but she's she was fearless and she she, and she was such a great actor that she inhabits that so so beautifully uh but so many people don't give her credit 
for that because they just look at her as, oh, beautiful She's woman. Pretty. That's great. Yeah. Not a yeah. bad thing, but she can do so much more. And as we get older, those are the roles that are more interesting. I mean, unless you're playing someone who's actually a little bit touched, you know, you've got to get to that part where it's more interesting to play these characters. Like for me, playing a character who is the mom of the lead it, this was such a great role because I am a mom. My daughter's only nine. But basically, I mean, there's nothing she could do that I would ever, ever kick her out of my house or, you know, say she couldn't, she wasn't my child or any of that. And in this movie, I play a woman who's so against her child being gay that I send her to conversion therapy. And that's not in my wheelhouse of political <laughs> anything. But this movie made me so much more of an activist. Because I did the research, like, who are the people who could send their kid to something like that? Because they can't all be monsters, you know, uh, they can't all, I mean, that would hurt my humanity. So I realized that a lot of it is just this misinformation that is deliberately fed to people through a lot of times religion, the church, certain churches that are not accepting and they were legitimately scared for their children. They thought their kids were going to hell if they were gay. And this was the only way to save them. Anyway, met um, with some amazing mothers who had reacted poorly to their children coming out. And now they're huge activists. So, you know, that was the role was such a gift to me to be able to play someone that I really judged so heavily, hard, judged so hard, Um but to find the humanity in her, which was fear. It wasn't lack of love. It was fear. So, I mean, that's what you guys have to look forward to as you get older. Right. What do you think that the audiences will, after they watch this film, will take away the most? Like, what is, what do you hope that they will take away the most? If you're, we're speaking about conversion therapy and about the, the, the lifestyle, which is completely and totally normal and a different way to look at it, like, what what is your point? What is your messaging for this time? I mean, I always say that it's about the importance of connection and the power of allyship. And that's just kind of my fancy way of saying like we're more alike than we are different, you know, so I, I don't and allyship is just truly not caring if the other person is, looks the same as you or feels the same as you or has the same attraction as, as you. It's just about being an, another person and you help that person. That's what allyship is. And I just yeah. feel like if we had more of that in the world, things would be in such a better place. And I do have hope, you know, we were in North Carolina when Kamala got the nomination and it was a nice place to be. Rob's American. So we follow American politics quite a lot here. And it's been a pretty scary place for a long time, which is another reason why we really wanted to make this movie is to just stop building up barriers and just talk, you yeah. know, like, just talk to people. We're more alike than we are different. Yeah, and, and uh, I, people I look up to, Tom Hanks has a word, and he says one of the, or one of the most powerful words that you'll ever learn is, or know, is help. Just help. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because these are all like platitudes. Yeah, we're stronger together. Yeah, let's celebrate our differences and all that. But what I think is, we need active allyship to marginalized mm -hmm. communities, not just passive. It's fine to, to, to be this sort of liberal, uh, that, that, that these are our values, but it's how can we be active? How can, because there's statistics, like the Trevor Project has a statistic that says if an LGBTQ youth um, is seen and celebrated by just one adult in their life, that the, the suicide rate goes down 40%. Right. Mm -hmm. So and, and you look at so we, we've I don't want to, you know, get out of this conversation without talking about Sarah Cunningham, but she's the founder of Free Mom Hugs and Jen uh, connected with Sarah and I'll, I'll let but but talk about active allyship and the viral moment. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Jen. Yeah, Sarah Cunningham became a huge inspiration to me as an activist and as a mom. Uh, she's a mom out of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and Southern Baptist, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, not accepting church and her son Parker came out to her and she did not take it well. And she lost a lot of time with him that she regretted deeply when she just did the work. Because as she was estranged from her child, doing all the things that the church told her to do, and this is the only way to save them, you have to do it this way, you have to, have to, it's hard, I know, but you have to, she just thought this is wrong, like this can't be the way to love my child best. And when she started educating herself, and it's not hard nowadays with the internet. You know, it's not hard to get some critical thought in there and just test what you're you've been told. And of course, she found out that the to us LGBTQIA plus community is lovely. And she became like their biggest fans. And they said, uh, and sorry, then she went to her very first pride parade with Parker. And she put a little pin, homemade pin that said free mom hugs. So this is this is active allyship, right? Keep going, Jen. Yeah, she um, (laughs) excuse me. She had so many people that approached her to ask for a hug. And really, you wouldn't mind hugging me because they had felt so unlovable. And, you know, like one girl said, I haven't had a hug in four years from my mom because I'm a lesbian. And, you know, so this year I actually marched in my first Pride Parade in Toronto for Free Mom Hugs because there's a chapter here in Toronto. It's under Free Mom Hugs Canada here. Um, But we're going to go to uh, they, you know, it was my first time in the parade marching, but they have more than 35,000 volunteers all over North America. We partnered with them on um, releasing this time in theaters on Allyship Day, which is August August 8th, pardon me. Uh, and she's just such an inspiration because I love that Sarah shows that you don't have to get it right. You know, you don't have to get it right the first time. And you're, you, that was probably a shock to her. Her life is going to, her kid's life is going to look different than she thought it might. It's okay if you don't say the right thing at first, but it's not okay if you don't correct it. You know, it's not your fault if you were given misinformation, but it is your responsibility to make sure you know better. When you know better, do better. And so that's yeah. what we really want. You asked earlier, I'm sorry, this is the longest winded answer. What do I hope people get out of this film? Is just, you know, the allyship is what make the world a better place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just... and, and, and I, I like to, I've said it at a few festivals, but it's true. I, you know, I'm an old dog. I'm 52, but I can learn a new trick. Mm-hmm. I can learn a new trick and I can do better. I can do better with pronouns. I can do better with listening and seeing people, you know, and, and this, and, and this also, you know, I hate to get political again, but, you know, um, register to vote if you have and if you're a young person find the the candidates that that you know are, are about allyship and helping marginalized communities uh, and we all are not immune to the disease that is spreading across america either i really 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 thought we were a lot better off in this country that we were than we were but i run our social media and it's all pro allyship etc and the ugliness that i've seen coming from people with Canadian flags in their profile is so saddening and disgusting to me. So we're not immune. Like we've, we've got work to do here too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think, and a lot of us don't know enough about voting. I'm, in, I'm almost 50 years old. I mean, I know who definitely who I know who I'm going to vote for, but it takes a <laughs> while, you know, to know the parties, know what you need to do. But yeah, that's what we're really Look, trying to push is and also there's, allyship. I- yeah, there's also companies and things that, you know, do yeah. crazy shit. And we don't need, I don't need to get my chicken nuggets from Chick-fil-A who has, you know, had a lot of anti-LGBTQ stances, you know. Oh, and human rights is atrocious. Yeah, so it's like there's things we can do, you know. And I, I believe there's more of us than them. And I, be- I, I think it's this populist last gasp of the, of the, of the uh, you know, the white, patriarchy uh, i love the taylor swift uh, song all too well the fuck the patriarchy keychain we actually ordered a patriarchy a fuck the patriarchy keychain you can order it on amazon i highly recommend oh, it don't, don't don't do it on amazon yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> they're not a sponsor yeah. are they we do not need that for day deal <laughs> okay okay Get it from a queer BIPOC owned small business. I yeah. love it. Yes. Okay. okay, wait. Final question for you guys because um, when this time comes out on August 8th, um, I want people to know that the people who are responsible for this time are a husband and wife team. Robert and Jennifer, you are married. 
And uh, there is a lot of husband and wife creative teams that work together. But you guys are also the, ju- product, the d- producer and the directors of this film. What was your collaboration process like? Like, what advice can you give to other husband and wife teams who are creatives taking on an arduous process of making a film? And like, how can it make sense for them to do it? Like, what's the push and pull? What's, where's the balance? Where do they find yeah. the balance? We, we literally I mean, just- happy home and a happy set. Jen, we yes. just talked about this, right? This yeah. morning about our complimentary sort of styles. Yeah, um, it's funny too. We at work are much different than we are at home. Like on set, it's even a lot easier to be differential because we just respect the filmmaking process, you know? So like when he's directing and I'm producing, as it was with this time, I'd come to him with thoughts that I had and maybe we could try it this way or whatever. But at the end of the day, he's a director. He's got the vision in his head. I can do what I want to try to do to save time or save something here, there, or other ways. But I'm going to support him always at the end of the day. That's A, my job, and B, what I believe in. I mean, then when we get home, though, it's it's not like I pretend that, oh, you're still all kind of in charge. <laughs> And we don't really talk about stuff. Like if we have issues during the day, it's sort of dealt with right there because I don't think it's good to fester any kind of miscommunication or anything with anybody on set. I'm like the little miss happy, try to make everybody feel the feelings and, you know, get it out on set because I've been on a million sets from everything as a background performer to a stand in to an actor to executive producer, director, whatever. So I've seen all sides of how people are treated and you shouldn't be treated differently based on what role you're playing in that production that day. If you're playing the role of a person who's there to make the film better, then you should be treated just as well as the person who's financing the thing, in my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, You know what? Jen and I had this conversation this morning. I am very (laughs) myopic, right? (laughs) I am laser focused, but I'm in it. I'm in the micro in a way. I'm, I'm just down in it. Jen's so good at these big picture ideas and, and, you know i mean it, yeah i just walk that, around all day with stuff going through my brain and then every once in a while i'll be like what if we blah, 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 and then something sometimes comes out well and then something i'm like a dog with a bone with it right so we, we work yeah, and then well he does the hard work i love it <laughs> so i think if you have a, a relationship that's stable to begin with and filled with respect and you know the stuff that a relationship needs then it should be really complimentary on set because as long as you can pack anything that may be going on personally at the door, you know that person so well. I got the chance, oh, I'm going to name drop, to work with Steven Spielberg and Janusz Kamensky as Janusz is is Steven's DP, DOP. And those two just look at each other and they know, you know, like Steven will just look over at Janusz and Janusz will be like, and he whispers to his camera guy, like change it to a 15 mil. And that's the way that, you know, you should be with your significant other, you think. So it does, I, I think it can be helpful if the two people can leave the egos and the hurt feelings at the door sometimes. I will say, having worked with the two of you the first time we did a movie together, which feels like a million years ago at this point, I didn't know you were married. The working dynamic was so seamless oh, that I had no idea until like two weeks later. I'm like, oh yeah, someone's so married. I was like, wait, what? Pardon? <laughs> um, because it is so seamless it is so easy to work with both of you and both of you are such professionals at your craft such masters at what you do uh that you walk in and that's where you are a relationship or not like it's it's all at the door and you are there to do a job and make magic if we're if we're, we're if we're the so. parents you're like a daughter because you are also in my head um uh, which i love you know i love the shorthand with when you find people that Wait, become are you your also film married family. to sarah no, I, she's, <laughs> things she's just our, got really interesting. No, I, she, I said she's like she's our daughter. I know. <laughs> we're just trying to uh, bump we're not, ratings. We're okay? not. We're not in Utah or Arizona on a compound. <laughs> but we could probably be, be cheaper than here. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. probably a tax credit. There's probably a tax credit. Um, <laughs> probably less construction. Very much so. <laughs> Um, just a lot of dirt. Um, no, guys, this is this has been great. I, I really love I really love this conversation that we had. And I love the fact that you've brought this film to our attention. And where can we people watch it? 
Oh, um, yeah. So, whoa, okay. our screening on uh, August 8th in Toronto was actually sold out. Okay. Um, so, we are going to have it for available for streaming on the Gather platform after that. And we will be doing some more screenings around North America. Rob, you, uh, you probably yeah, have those. We're in about 16 cities. These are free screenings because um, we want to get the movie out there. We want, we're trying to, our movie, it just turned out to be a megaphone for the free mom hugs allyship message. So when we join forces, we're like, okay, let's get this out there. Um, so now, yeah, we're in about 16 cities. It's all on the website, www.thistimefilm.ca, um, a, a, where you can see it sort of near you. Uh, and it's, 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 it's streaming on Super Channel uh, also here in Canada. It'll be on the Gather platform August 9th, sort of nationwide uh, in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, and then the hope is, we're kind of doing this backwards, but the hope is we've, we've developed this great relationship with uh, Violet Crown Cinema uh, in the States. And so the hope is a platform theatrical in the States uh, nice. in four cities after this event, because <clears throat> we're doing one with them in Santa Fe. And then the idea is in the fall to, to follow it up with uh, a platform uh, theatrical, because you, you, what you realize... Uh, you know, distribution is so it's, it's a steep learning curve for Jen and I, and it, and it's not fixed; it's fluid; it's always changing. But uh, you kind of have to do it yourself if you don't have giant you have names private in private invest a private investor money. If well, you've been able to get yeah. grant money, great; you can sell it, you know, for a lower price point, and you're done with it. But we were so fortunate to have a private investor, and she's so amazing that we really do want to do everything we can to try to get the money back and make more movies. Yeah, but even even like the theater chains, you know, other than Deadpool, everything dies, right? And they know this, and they're they're trying to get you know more concert films and stuff uh, directly uh, where they bypass the studios. So for us, it's like okay, we can do this. It's you know, and you're looking at these models of four walling. Uh, that, that worked really well in the 70s and that, that the far right has done forever with their their Christian films, right? <clears throat> um, they have, right? They go through the churches and yes. everything. And so you can kind of study it. I'm like, why can't we do this on the left? We can Amen. do this. Amen. So that's what we're working on is, you know, trying to do it on the left. And, you know. and the church said, hallelujah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, Thank you guys so much for talking to us about this time and telling us where we can watch it. I I really enjoyed watching it. So, yeah, Thank you. preview. Thank uh, you. All good. What's next for you two? What's the what are the projects do you guys have on the horizon? Oh my gosh, I'm tragically unemployed, uh, underemployed, <laughs> unemployed, uh, working hard but not getting paid for it. Tons of I mean, I've got stuff in development, but it's more, it's in development, you know? So right now we're working on getting um, this time just out and seeing to as many places as we can and hoping to encourage the conversation about allyship and, you know, not just voting for your own rights, but voting for the lives of marginalized people because they're the ones that need the help right now. I mean, I'm yeah, pretty right, sure that right the now, world that is doing okay. Yeah. Right now we're, yeah. I mean, this is our sole focus, right? This is this is it. We get up, we, we work on our computers till our eyes bleed, you know, at night. And then we get up and do it again because you don't make a movie to have it not be seen or to have it be dumped into some streaming, you know, uh, cemetery in some, you know, vertical, you know, thing that like, yeah, I mean, we, we, you make a movie cause you want people to see it. So this is uh, all our soul focus. That's that's definitely it. And if you can instill that mentality into some other independent directors and producers that, you know, are around and are on the come up and they see how hard it is to make a film and then they have all this footage and they may or may not edit it. And if they do edit it, you know, they may apply to a few film festivals and then they just leave it there like, no, you know, you do this so people see your work as much people as possible. And the first step is doing it. And then the battle begins all over again, trying to get people to watch it. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> and I would say to people, uh, to independent filmmakers, if you can. Now, not you, not everybody has the luxury, but 
if you can try to budget you know, 20 grand or something. Do you only have 10, 10, just something, you know, so you can get the right, you know, publicity team, you know, or social impact team or analytics and digital marketing person. You, you got to think about it. The business it doesn't side. end at, at the festivals, just as you said, right? So if you, if there's a world where you can treat that as a line item in your budget, you know, you will be grateful you did. Right. And you get it out to the niche market that the film is, you know, geared towards. And yeah. maybe it's just the people in that niche market that watch it, love it and tell their friends about it. But that's who the main movie was made for. And that's well, who you essentially want to see it. So yeah. even if, if, it, if it's not theatrical, gear it towards them. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you need to know who is the audience for your film and who will be the evangelists for your film. Right. Who who's and that's what you just said, the niche. I mean, that's and that's kind of what we're doing with this campaign. We think the movie has this ability to cross over uh, just simply because of allyship and, and that idea. But but no, you have to know who, where the fish are, you know, how, how to go after them. You know, it's it's like I really again, it's we, we got lucky. We, we came in a little under budget. Um, and so we had some resources that, luck, that was good producing and I'm not saying by me, I'm saying Ashley DeVries and Tiffany, and we have lots yeah. and lots and lots of production managers to thank. I don't want to give that to luck, but yeah, no, you're right. But it's, it's, it's true. I mean, I, you want those people, it's like you're out on a ledge and you want them, they're holding the rope. Right. And so, um, but yeah, yeah, I, you really, as an independent filmmaker, I couldn't, I just can't say you know, how, just having learned it, you're, you're going to want to get that, build that team around you for the distribution part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And not leave it to somebody else because you want people to see it. So so put that line item in the budget, um, whatever you can, if it's 10 grand, 20 grand, but you'll need something. Because just like I need Sarah Lang while I'm making the movie, uh, you know, I mean, well, I always need you, Sarah, but uh, but you you'll need people that whose expertise is not yours in in all this you know publicity social impact you know analytics all that you're going to need these people yeah just if you, you should prepare for that that is a word that is the practicality of, of doing what we do like we like you said it's it's a it's a literally a team effort we all need each other you can't some of it's luck, but most of it, it is just labor and it's love and it's expertise and it's it's forethought and pre planning and <laughs> well you know? and Jen, yeah and Jen uh, had as this uh, great acting coach Larry Moss um, and Malcolm Gladwell says it too but the idea of having a talent for your talent you know which means you gotta do the work you gotta put the ten thousand hours in. You know, it's, 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 would the Beatles be the Beatles if they didn't spend, you know, seven days a week in a strip club in Hamburg, Germany playing till their fingers bled, right? You have to put the hours in. And, and then that, then, you know, the hope is that the, that, that the dots will connect because you're doing the work, right? And, and I think they will. And you end up sort of and it, creating your own luck. It's, we just went to, in North Carolina, my daughter was doing one of those rock climbing walls. And I looked at it and it's the same kind of thing. You don't know how this piece is going to connect to this piece. You know, your foot's on this little one. And then you're like, oh, wait, but now because my foot's here, I can go to here. Or, yeah. and then I can use that to get to here. And we often, you know, I kind of believe the pieces are all out there. It's, it's, we have to just figure out how to sort of climb that cliff. Amen. Sorry, this is, it feels like a church service to me. I'm sorry, guys. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It does. No, the church of filmmaking. <laughs> all good. <laughs> no, okay, uh, but that 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 is definitely the connect. It, it is the connection of everything. But on that note, I am going to thank you both, Robert and Jennifer, for a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Um, thank you thank for you. kind of. Thank you for inspiring audiences with your film this time. And thank you for reminding me of what I do. And thank you for keeping our dear Sarah fed. 
We yes. appreciate. Oh, oh, barely. I barely <laughs> keep her fed. <laughs> we look forward to the day we can pay everybody what they're worth. Yeah. Same yeah. Man. This Again. has been lovely. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, you're, you're both lovely. You radiate joy and passion. Uh, and obviously that's what, you know, the folks watching this love and, and, and we love. So thank you. No worries. Anytime, anytime, but this time. <laughs> I just want to say one thing, you know, to the idea of help. If, uh, you know, if some, you guys have my email, Sarah does, you know, if somebody wanted advice or anything, I I'm open, you know, it's not like I can wave any magic wands, but, uh, but I am, uh, open to help you know if i can because a lot of people have done that for me i mean a lot of people in way higher positions uh would have done that have taken the time for me so uh just putting that out there sweet definitely um that is that is wonderful thank you for even like putting that out there so, yeah. you, you have to and it's much appreciated so yes again anyone watching if you need some advice you want to ask a question, contact us at Credit Box and we'll get the question over to Robert for you. Sure. Um, it's been a great morning. It's, uh, it's uh, been a great morning right? spending it with us. Cool. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. We, I we love you. It's so you. nice to see your lovely faces and truly to talk film with people that have such high level of expertise in filmmaking. So thank Amen. you. Thank you for making the time. Thank that you, guys. That is my today. It was so um, much fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for making the time, Credit Boxers. Um, you know what to do. Like I said, comment, send us messages, watch us, and uh, just keep coming back. Cool. Cool, cool, awesome. cool. Bye. 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 <laughs>